So I'm pretty convinced that the golf marketers will pretty much say anything these days to get you to buy what they're selling you. And a lot of you at home probably have these giant warehouses just full of books and DVDs and training aids, and you're still sitting on the sidelines wondering why you're not getting better at the game of golf. Listen, at the end of the day, when you want to go out there and work on your golf swing, you wanna be working on things that are gonna ultimately make you more consistent. You wanna work on things that are gonna help you do the things that you aren't doing really well. And two of the most important factors when it comes to swinging the golf club and playing this game and being able to do it at a consistent level is you have to have a very consistent low point in your golf swing. But on top of that, when you start to deliver the club through the hitting area, you need to have really, really good stability in the club face as it makes its way through the point of contact and through the low point. If you can get those two things done, there's a fighting chance that you're gonna have a whole big change to your golf game this year and many years to come. And that's exactly what we're gonna be working on here today. We're gonna to be working on a low point drill. And this drill is what I call the push-pull handoff drill. And it's a really, really fun drill for a lot of you at home because you're gonna be able to follow a very incremental process and you're gonna be able to be accountable for your actions. And you're gonna see that in just about an hour's time in your practice session, when you start hitting golf balls, that you're gonna start wearing out the center of the club face and you're gonna be in the world of compression. And I know a lot of you at home have probably listed your clubs on eBay at one point saying, hey, my clubs are brand new because I've never hit the center of the club face. We're gonna fix that today. Let's go ahead and get working. Okay, step number one. This is where we get things set up and this is where we get really connected to the position of the lead shoulder, the movement of the elbow and the movement of the wrist through the point of contact, through the low point, and through the end of the release. Now, I've created this sort of visual on the ground that we're gonna use for the duration of the video today where this first line here that's in the back away from the target is going to be our line in which the ball is gonna be sitting. The second line, and you can draw this or you can use alignment sticks, you can take some Dr. Scholl's foot spray and just spray it on the ground. The second line is going to be where basically the end of the low point in the swing shape is gonna be. Okay, so it's somewhere between three and five inches in front of the golf ball. And then this final line is going to be where the release should be fully done at that point. Now, our job in this step is to get connected to the position of the shoulder and how the arm moves its way through the contact and through the low point. I want you to think about the elbow leading the wrist and the wrist leading the golf club. That's a good way for you to kind of think about what we're gonna do here. Now, your lead shoulder in the golf swing is your primary pivot point and is one of the determining factors as to how the club is gonna work its way into the low point. It's gonna determine your low point in the swing shape. You can get your shoulders out of position very quickly by having way too much tension in your hands and your arms. So what we're gonna do in this first part is we're gonna get the shoulder into a fixed position and we're gonna allow the arm to swing freely from one side of the body to the other, making sure that the elbow and the wrist function properly. Now, the reason why we're gonna be focusing in on the lead elbow in step number one is because I want you to understand that if your elbow gets out of position in the release, you can put yourself in harm's way and you can also make it hard for you to stabilize the club face. And you're gonna see this as we go further and further into the process. Most of the time when people get their elbow out of position and they cause a lot of instability, it's because the elbow turns in towards the rib cage. That movement right there, this is actually called external humerus rotation, is what puts the elbow in that bad spot where when you start to hit down on the golf ball, you can send a shock wave up through the elbow and you can put a lot of stress on that joint. And that's when you start getting inflammation and you start running into golfer's elbow on the lead side. So what we're gonna do to combat that and to help kind of fight off big excessive rates of closure is we're gonna keep the elbow pulling down the target line. Now I want you to think about the elbow pulling the wrist, the wrist pulling the club. That's the first part of this drill. So let's go ahead and walk through this. The first 10 reps of the 30 reps that we're gonna be completing are gonna be done without the golf club in our hands. We're gonna kind of preset ourselves into a light impact position, get our shoulder in the right spot, and then we're gonna think about the wrist position and the elbow, what it needs to do from one side of the body to the other. Now how I like to do this is I like to go ahead and take my setup. I'm gonna have the ball position off of the lead ear and I'm gonna take my normal grip in my left hand. Okay, I'm gonna take the right hand off, and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my wrist and I'm just gonna move it until it's anatomically flat, okay? Same thing that you should be doing at home. So if you're a weaker grip or a stronger grip, you just wanna move your hand in the direction of the target, keeping the club face square behind the golf ball and get it anatomically flat. I want you to take notice of the position of your wrist. Where is my glove logo pointed based off of my grip? Well, it's pointed kind of out in front of me here. It's not fully down the target line and it's not pointed back at you at home. That position right there is what I'm gonna be trying to get my arm to move through. Now I'm gonna add a little component here. 
I'm gonna take the club out and I want you to just to take your wrist and I want you to bow it ever so slightly. If, imagine if you had a hole in your palm and you were looking down at the ground and you could see right through that hole. That's the position that you're gonna be trying to do. Now, I'm not advocating you to bow your wrist tons and tons at the top of the swing or even down in front of you. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna help you fight off a lot of the big desire to try to get the club head working past your hands way too fast. Okay, understand that. So now that we understand that position, what we're gonna do is from this position is we're gonna make sure that we can get the arm to swing back and we want the wrist to be anatomically flat at this point. So that little bit of bowing that you had in the wrist is gonna come out and you're gonna just have it flat right in front of you. You're gonna let your arm start to swing down and I want you to keep your elbow moving all the way until it gets past where the end of the release is. When you do this, I want you to go ahead and make sure your wrist feels like it gets into that same spot through the point of contact, and I want you to stop. So it's these little small reps. So you're getting connected to the position of where your shoulder is, you're getting connected to the position of the elbow pulling it down the target line, and you're getting connected to the wrist as it makes its way from this position just in front of your trail thigh. I know a lot of you at home are gonna be like, this feels like training wheels. Start small. Every single playing professional in the world, when they're making changes, has to learn these new subtle movements and start to gradually increase the pace in which they do so. That's how you learn things. You don't go out there and try to bite off all that you can chew and try to get it all done at full speed. That's what runs you into problems and that's why a lot of you at home never really make any significant progress. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna preset myself into a good impact position. So I'm just gonna take my hips, shift them left, open them up slightly. Okay, now I'm gonna put that wrist in that spot that I just saw where my glove logo is pointed in the same spot. I've got a little bow. I'm gonna let my arm swing back. My glove logo is pointed out in front of me. My wrist is anatomically flat. Now I'm gonna pull my elbow all the way through to the end of the release and I'm gonna make sure my wrist is in the same spot as we had it at impact. So we're just pulling that arm to the end of the low point or to the end of the release. So through the low point to the end. Now when you're doing this, you shouldn't feel a whole lot of tension. Your arm should be kind of hanging down freely. To support the arm going back, you might feel a little bit of activation. To get the arm to swing through the other side, you might feel a little activation. I want you to think about pulling the elbow, leading the wrist, getting the wrist to turn into the correct spot, and that's the whole goal of that first 10 reps. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the golf club back in our hands. You're gonna stay aware of what you just did for the next 20 reps. When you do these reps, you're gonna check every single rep when you complete it to make sure you're in the right spot. Let's go ahead and go through it. Okay, so I wanna just kinda of preset the position. Now I'm gonna swing back. Okay, check. Is my wrist pointed in the same spot? You betcha. Is my elbow pointed down the target line or did I feel like I pulled it to that spot? My elbow pulled the wrist, my wrist pulled the club. So now we're gonna just do 20 reps. So as I was doing those reps, one of the things that I didn't mention was that we want the club to actually bottom out inside that window between where the golf ball is and the low point. You can see that I was brushing the grass pretty much every single rep. Now, if you're not brushing the grass, when you start your arm over to the other side, then you are squeezing the life out of the golf club or you're actively pushing on the shaft with your lead thumb. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that when you start allowing your arm to go from this position, Pick the thumb up off the shaft and your pointer finger and think about just pulling this elbow down the target line and getting your wrist in the right spot. You can see as I'm talking to you that the club worked its way down. I didn't have to control it by trying to force it in that position. I just kept my arm moving. I focused on getting the wrist to feel what I just kind of preset it in and the club did the work. Step number two is gonna take somewhere between eight to 10 minutes when you first get started out doing this. We're gonna be doing right around 30 reps again. And what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be introducing your trail hand and arm back to the golf club and making those same movements happen. But our goal here as we go through these reps is to do it from a static address position and add a little bit of shift from one side of the body to the other so that you can feel 
what it's like to have weight shift happening and your arms moving simultaneously. It's kind of an interesting concept for a lot of you at home because a lot of you just try to do this stuff with your arms way too much and that's when the body shuts down. So we want to wake up the body and we want to get the trail hand and arm to follow along with what it just felt from the lead side. So second step, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and preset our body into a good light impact position. Okay, now get the wrist into that position where it was flat and then we bow it so I can see down through the hole. Make sure it's in the right spot, the club face is square. Take your right wrist and go get it on the club, but keep your shoulders nice and square. Okay, now what you're gonna feel is some significant creasing right here in the right wrist. This extension is gonna play a vital role in the stability of the club face when you start rocking and rolling. But I also want you to take notice of where your elbow pit is pointed. Your elbow point is pointed pretty much in the direction of where your lead wrist is pointed. Your elbow is actually turned in towards the body. That right there, when we start picking up the pace, is also going to play a significant role in your success. Now what we're going to do here from this position is we're going to go ahead and try to get our hands and our arms to move all the way to the end of the release, but we're going to go ahead and just kind of shift back onto our trail side. So lead wrist is pointed out in front of me. Now I'm gonna pull my elbow down the target line. Okay, I'm checking to make sure the reps are perfect. Is my lead wrist in a good spot? Yep. Did I feel my elbow pull down the target line? You betcha. Did the club try to bottom out on the way through? It certainly did. You can see that the club is bottoming out here every single rep. Pick up the pace a little bit as you become proficient with it. Complete your 30 reps. Remember, stay connected to the lead shoulder the lead elbow and the lead wrist, and make sure the trail hand and arm is following along properly. Check the positions when you're at the end of the release to make sure that they're in the same spot that you saw them when the point of contact would be taking place. That's gonna change here in step number three. Let's do another quick few reps here. Step number three. This is where you and I start having some fun. This is the most critical step in this process. Why? Well, because you just took the time to put the training wheels on and get connected to your lead shoulder, your lead elbow and your lead wrist, and also train the trail side what it's gonna be doing in conjunction with that. You got the trail side to cooperate with the lead side. The trail side's gonna have an active role here when we get to steps four and steps five, for sure. But I want you to understand this. These next 20 reps, that's gonna take us about five minutes to complete, is where you need to be disciplined and back check the positions. If you go and you look at your swings after we're doing this, and you look at it on camera, an impact looks different. Your position of your shoulder, position of your elbow, the position of your wrist, if that stuff does not look like what you just tried to get connected to, then you need to be disciplined to go down to step one and step two and repeat that process. It's all about getting connected to movements and making sure that you're staying connected to those movements and let the golf club react. You got it? Okay, good. Now, we're gonna be doing right at 20 reps. We're gonna be really focused here. We're gonna just make the swing a little bit longer. Now what we're gonna do is we're not gonna stop where the end of the release would be. We're gonna let the club swing as we start to pull the elbow, pulling the wrist to pull the club head to that position. We're gonna let the tension really come out and you're gonna do this, like I said, for 20 reps and you're gonna back check it. So let's go ahead and set ourselves up. The golf swing is gonna be done somewhere between a nine o'clock and three o'clock swing and a hip high to hip high swing. It's gonna be done just a little bit longer than hip high and a little bit shorter than nine to three. So we're gonna go ahead and take our setup. Okay, so I like to use a little pressure into my right ankle, turn back. Now what I'm gonna do is think about my elbow pulling, but I'm gonna shift my hips left first so I get my weight underneath my left ankle. So it's right ankle, left ankle, I'm pulling my elbow to pull the wrist, making sure it's working through the same spot. And I'm gonna let the right hand and arm follow along for now. Okay, got it? Let's go. Right ankle.
I just completed my 20 reps. What I just had there was some good success. A couple reps weren't as good, but if you look really closely, I just made a nice dollar bill divot right here in front of the golf ball, right inside that window. How did I do that? Shoulder in the right spot, lead elbow, lead wrist, letting the right hand follow along with those movements. Not trying to influence the club down, just focusing on those movements and letting the club do what it wanted to do. The train can come off the tracks pretty quickly here in step number four if you start going out there and trying to put a whole lot of heat to this thing at first. Think about step four is your acceleration phase and you're just trying to put a little bit of speed in it and you're gonna try to hit the golf ball somewhere between you know, 80 to 100 yards with a seven iron. Okay, you're not trying to hit it out of the back of the range. You're just trying to be disciplined and diligent with your movement. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make these sort of nine to three swings, but this function of the right arm on the way down, this is why I call this the handoff drill, is gonna play a vital role to being able to get you set up for a good delivery position. Now, if you followed my stuff at all, you know that one of the first videos that I put out on the channel and on the website was the close the window drill. And that close the window drill is basically where you look at the golf swing from a face on perspective and on the way down, you can see that there's this big window between my trail arm and my body. That right there is a pretty good indicator that you've started the process of trying to throw the club and getting the arms way too far out in front of you. So what we're gonna do from a good nine o'clock position is we're gonna take this trail elbow and we're gonna close the window by getting your elbow down in front of your belt loop. Now, if you look at this position, it's very comparable to where we were just spending steps one, two, and three. We were just really working on that position. Now, what do you think we should do? Well, we're gonna hand it off for now and we're gonna start working on getting that left elbow to pull it through and letting the club release. So it's gonna be nine to three swings, but we're gonna be starting to introduce the golf ball here and we're gonna look for the golf ball to react a certain way to know if we're set up for success to move into step five and really turning up the heat. So we're gonna go through the protocol now, but I want you to understand that steps four and five should take up the duration of your practice session. You can give yourself some goals, like it's step number four, maybe I'm gonna to try to hit 10 really good crispy golf shots with really good solid movement, where I look up and the golf ball's nice and straight. If it's not, then I may go back down into steps one, two, and three, come back, test myself in step number four. Now, if I get good success in step number four, then I'm certainly gonna put the, the foot on the accelerator and go up to step number five. It's all about your time management and being disciplined in this process. So let's go ahead and go through it. So I'm gonna do kind of a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one at first just to get connected to the movements. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shift and turn back to nine. I'm gonna go ahead and shift back onto my lead ankle, bringing my elbow down. I'm gonna pull the elbow through that position. You can see that I pulled the elbow through the end of the release, letting the elbow pull the wrist, letting the club just kind of do what it wanted to do there. It should have bottomed out even with that kind of controlled rep that I just did. So I'm gonna to try to do this in fluidity now with some speed. Okay, not tons of speed. Focusing on what I feel for my elbow, my lead wrist. Okay, getting my right elbow down in front. Okay, felt pretty good. All right, there's a good rep there. If you wanna look at this step is like, I just worked my butt off warming up here. I'm looking at my shots. Are they good? Are they out of the center of the club face? If they're not, then you're doing something wrong at one of these steps. You're not as connected to the movements. Be disciplined, right? We're here to hit the golf ball better. So I'm gonna do one more rep here and we're gonna pick up the pace. So we've had a pretty productive practice session so far. We've just spent right around 40 minutes getting ourselves to hit some golf balls. We are hitting the ball really tight and really straight right now. We're hitting it pretty much out of the center of the face every time. Now we're ready to start turning up the gas. Now remember this, a throwing motion is you actively propelling something out here. Now motion is actually gonna happen when that trail elbow starts to work its way down in front of your belt loop. That's gonna be happening very dynamically in the swing shape. Now what I want you to remember is, is that that throwing motion that you're gonna do needs to have the elbow kind of feel like it's like an anchor. You get the elbow into the right spot, you start to throw. I do not want you to throw with your wrist. I want you to keep the wrist in that spot and kind of throw it with your arm. Keep your tension levels down in your grip and let the wrist kind of respond to those movements. Don't try to help it with your wrist because I know a lot of you are gonna have desire to do so. So what it's gonna look like on the way down 
is that as you're starting to shift back onto your lead ankle and the elbow works down, now you're gonna start to help throw the club head down into the ball, but you're gonna make sure that you're not trying to actively lose this creasing in this right hand or this extension in the right wrist. You do that, now you're gonna have a whole lot more speed on nine to three swings that you can start building up into. This is how you would spend the rest of your practice session because if you establish a good low point and you have some good stability and you have some good understanding as to how the club is gonna be controlled and get the elbows in the right spot, now you're ready for business. So let me show you exactly how I practice this now. So you're gonna see when I get to this step, when I'm starting to add speed, I'm gonna kinda of go back through the protocol in my brain when I get over the golf ball. I'm gonna focus on the position of the lead shoulder, the movement of the lead elbow, the movement of the lead wrist. I'm gonna kinda of focus on the trail arm independently. I'm gonna create those feels and those visuals in my brain. I'm gonna make a practice swing and then I'm gonna hit a golf ball. So watch me go through this. This is how I want you to handle things. So you can see why it's called the handoff drill. Right hand's bringing it down, lead hand and arm, taking over the business, right hand's still helping influence it a little bit. I've got those visuals in my brain. Now I'm marrying them together with a good feel and a good swing shape. Working at a speed where I think I'm doing it right. Okay, good rep there. So on that little small golf swing that I just compressed the daylights out of, I just hit it probably about 80% of my normal distance. And it just took me 40 to 50 minutes to get really good solid contact, get connected to some movements. And now I can spend the rest of my session hitting high quality shots. And now I'm really starting the process of actually ingraining something that's gonna be useful to me. What we have to start doing as a golfing community, if we wanna start really seeing people get better at this game, is we have to stop following the feels of what playing professionals are doing. Yes, these guys are extremely knowledgeable and there's a lot to be learned from some of them that have some good experience when it comes to the technical nuance of the golf swing. But understanding that your feels are always going to be different should get the wheels turning in your brain. You can look at the movements and start trying to work your way around that, but you can also just get personalized instruction that helps you understand what you should be working on, why you should be working on it, and have endless support from step one all the way to step five. Knowing that you're doing these things right based off of the DNA that you bring to the table is gonna help you be a whole lot more successful in the game of golf. Follow this protocol, have some fun with it, get out there, become a better ball striker by having good low point control and a good understanding of how you're gonna create stability in the club face without actively moving your wrists all over the place Get your elbows in the right spot, have some fun, hit some balls, and here's to playing your best golf in 2024 and beyond.